the duramater, arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. Several arachnoid granulations can be seen when the sinus is opened. These are the spots of drainage. The inflammatory response of the CNS to the pathogen causes swelling of the brain with its associated complications. Cerebrum, the largest part of the brain, can be studied in two parts, exterior and interior. The exterior of the cerebrum presents a superolateral, medial, and inferior surface. The rhinal sulcus is lateral to the uncus. The inferior surface is divided into an orbital and tentorial surface. The orbital surface has a prominent anteroposteriorly running olfactory sulcus, which lodges the olfactory bulb and tract. Focal cortical damage in the primary motor cortex causes contralateral paralysis of the muscles of the upper motor neuron type, spastic paralysis. The muscles or groups involved. Interior of the brain is best understood by observing cross sections. A horizontal section at the level of the interventricular foramen is an ideal place to understand the deep branches from the circle of Willis called the choroidal vessels supply the internal capsule. Damage to these vessels, as in case of hypertensive hemorrhages in the thalamus or basal ganglia. The hypothalamic nuclei are classified based on the region they occupy. There are four regions from anterior to posterior. These are preoptic, supraoptic, tuberal, and mammillary. The preoptic nuclei are located in the preoptic area, immediately below the lamina terminalis. The pituitary gland can be considered an extension of the hypothalamus, particularly the neurohypophysis. A hypothalamohypophyseal portal system ensures that specific hormone releasing and inhibiting factors reach the pituitary. Besides, the hypothalamus itself secretes some amount of oxytocin and vasopressin. The crus cerebri is seen anteriorly and the tectum is visible posteriorly. The crus cerebri are two massive pillars that rise from the pons and reach up to the diencephalon. The oculomotor nerve emerges from the medial aspect. The corpora quadrigemina are seen on the dorsal aspect as four distinct elevations. The trochlear nerve emerges from this surface. Brainstem herniation is seen during compression of the brainstem from above, causing it to slide down into the foramen magnum, the ocular motor, the trochlear, and the abducent nerve supply the extraocular muscles. The trochlear supplies the superior oblique. The abducent nerve supplies the lateral rectus. And the ocular motor supplies the rest of the muscles. The interior of the brainstem is best studied using cross sections. The horizontal sections at various levels are marked and involve seven standard levels. This includes two each for the midbrain and pons, and three for the medulla. The midbrain is studied at the level of superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus. In the section of brainstem at the upper medulla level, the expansion of central canal into the fourth ventricle is well observed. The midbrain can be divided into tectum, tegmentum, some of the fibers descending from the cerebrum end in the pontine nuclei. These are called corticonuclear fibers. Rest of the fibers descend into the medulla, decusate in the pyramid, and reach the spinal cord. These are the corticospinal fibers. In front of it is the medial longitudinal bundle.
The red nucleus is the most distinguishing feature of the midbrain at this level. It is located in the tegmentum behind the substantia nigra. The dorsal and ventral tegmental decusations are located in the midline in front of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. The red nucleus is large and lateral to both. The cerebellum is lodged in the posterior cranial fossa below the tentorium cerebelli. It also forms the roof of the fourth ventricle. It is connected to the brain stem by three peduncles, superior, middle, and inferior. These act as bridges through which the cerebellum maintains afferent and efferent connections with the rest of the brain. Chiari-1 malformation refers to a congenital hindbrain abnormality affecting the cerebellum. It is one of the most common but less severe forms of Chiari malformations. Often diagnosed in adulthood, the condition is characterized by herniation of a part of cerebellum, known as cerebellar tonsils. There exists a dynamic mechanism of production, circulation, and drainage of CSF. The ventricles contain special secreting pouches called the choroid plexuses from which the CSF is derived. Hydrocephalus refers to the accumulation of excess CSF in the brain. The internal carotid and the vertebral to make the circulation more effective, the two systems anastomose at the inferior aspect of the brain to form the circle of Willis. Branches arise from the circle and reach the superficial surface as well as the deeper areas of the brain.